January 17th, but you made that quite clear last week that you didn't care about that. Uh, didn't know and don't care. <laughs> yeah, we got I think this, this time of year, you better be focused on getting better. Yeah. Uh, those of you who've been covering us for a while, I've, I've said this a million times. There's two seasons, pre-Christmas, post-Christmas. Uh, it's much harder to win games post-Christmas. Uh, so you, you, you got to be focused on whether your team is improving. Uh, so that's really all my concern is that even if you, cause you can win, but you're really, you look at the film and I'm, there's so many things we need to get better at. I don't have time for anything else really. Okay. Uh, they can shoot good shooting team. Well, at Butler's just a, you know, you, you, but Butler's synonymous with winning. Uh, the thing about Butler is that, that hasn't changed for them over a long period of time is they play to win. Uh, they play for the team. Uh, if somebody's their best shooter, they give him the green light. They work hard to get him open, Kellen Dunn. Uh, their passers know their passers. Their, their rebounders know their rebounders. They never have identity crisis, it seems like, at Butler. They always have kids that are, know what they're good at, really are committed to the team, and play with great toughness. And it's a credit to their program because they've had a lot of, obviously, coaching changes since Barry Collier, who's now their AD. So they play smart. Very smart and, and, and unselfish and very physical. Uh, and, 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 and I say that as a compliment. They just, they're just hard to play against because they just don't give away games. If you beat them, you're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to make some shots, and you're going to have to play really hard. They just don't make mistakes. That, that's, and that, that's why they consistently win. And when they do make shots, they're really tough to beat. Is this a game when you schedule it? Uh, I think it's a home and home, right? I've regretted it ever since the day I schedule it. <laughs> it's a home and home, right? I knew this was going to be a good RPI game. This game will make us better, but it's going to be a brutal game to play both times we play. Well, that's why I mentioned RPI was where I was going. That, that's, this uh, to be I'm... honest with you, I think, you know, probably Chris would have the same problem we have when you're a, a, one of the top programs in the country. Teams don't want to play you home and home. In this day and age, certain leagues have, like this week's the Big Ten ACC challenge. The SC, you know, there's so many, we don't have a challenge. So we have to go get challenges. So for us, Iowa State's a challenge. Uh, you know, Butler's a challenge, home and home. And the problem is with so many of those type of games going on, and we're not a part of it. We have, so it makes scheduling so much harder. Because when you call somebody and, uh, you, you know, for me, Rick Pitino, he's got to play Michigan State in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. He's also got to play Kentucky every year. Uh, he's in a tournament every year. He's got so many home games, he's got to pay the bills for their athletic department. So, you know, it's tough. It's tough for them, te the, the, the teams in those leagues, to play us home and home as well. So Butler's a team that is kind of like us. They're not on everybody's speed dial to play. You know, and I think we, we got fortunate getting the Iowa State game as well. How did you feel about how you played in New York? I thought we really played uh, hard enough to win, and we, we showed a lot of heart and character. I don't think we played well by any stretch of the imagination. That doesn't mean we played poorly. I just think it's just early season basketball. I thought uh, credit to the teams we played, they took a lot of things away from us. Uh, and I just I wish we would have handled that better. I don't think we shot it particularly well. Farad missed a lot of shots he doesn't miss. We didn't finish great around the basket as a whole. We did it in the second half. We were much better in the second half of both games. But I think we're capable of playing way better than we played. And when I watch the film, uh, defensively, we make up for a lot with our schemes and our length. Uh, but we had a lot of breakdowns that we shouldn't, shouldn't have. Obviously, you weren't going to average 90 points a game, and you averaged in the 60s there. Um, was, was it a matter, like you said, you didn't finish sometimes, you were still running the offense well, but you just weren't making the shots? A uh, couple things. I think we missed a lot of open shots, and we didn't score around the rim. Uh, so it's going to be hard to score a lot of points. That being said, you're playing in a pro arena in, a, in an event not heavily attended, other than the UC fans, thank you, uh, and especially to our uh, Rally Cats dance and our band that took buses to get there. But you got an empty NBA arena, uh, and you got two physical defenses that are really well coached. And I just, 
and this does, this goes both ways. I thought the games were officially officiated very differently than the games I saw on TV at other tournaments, where I saw multiple fouls, especially early in the game, which loosens the game up the way it's played. I thought our game was played with the old rules. And that's not to say we had an advantage or disadvantage. I think that it just makes the game more physical. And you just, I guess you never know from one game to the next how it's going to be officiated. Right? That's just the way it is. You've got to be tough enough to figure it out. I thought our guys, what I liked is our, guy, our, our big guys struggled with that early, but they got both games. They did a, do a better job of handling it as the game went on. How does Ellis has a back? Uh, well, he, he landed a straight flat pancake on his back. So when you're built like him, that's a tough thing. It's a long fall, one, two. He doesn't have a lot of padding, so we'll see. See? We'll see. Yeah. Sorry to Belichick you. <laughs> how, how difficult is it to game plan against a guy like Roosevelt Jones that's unorthodoxed as a scorer? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think he's a better passer probably than he is a scorer. Uh, but he takes shots that we don't let our players take. But those are, those are the best shots for him. His, uh, his 12-foot push shot off the dribble uh, is his shot. The guy hasn't taken a three since before he got injured. So it's like over three years ago he hasn't even attempted one. But yet that push shot on the run, is, it's unbelievable. It's something, uh, something you would see at the Western Hill Sports Mall back in the day. Uh, over there, I don't want to name some of my friends, but they had some <laughs> some backyard games. But uh, he's a great player, you know. I think guy like guy like him is what college basketball is all about. You know, guy's been around, has made himself a better player, is a great college player. Too much, it, our announcers talk way too much about the pros and pro potential. Or you know, instead of celebrating college basketball, and Roosevelt Jones is a great example of a great. He's a great college player. Dunham too, obviously, but a lot different as a guy that. Well, Donald can really shoot. Big, yeah, I don't. I don't really know because I don't see the preseason stuff. Especially this year, I didn't read it. Was he pre? Was he player of the year in the Big East, or was he preseason? No, it was Dunn. Player of the year? I think he leads. Dunn. Yeah, Chris, Dunn. Chris Dunn was. Oh, okay, yeah, he should be. He leads our league in scoring, I believe. He led the Big East in I mean, scoring last right year. Right now, right now he is. But he did last year as well. So Kellen Dunn did. He's just a great player. I mean, he can make shots. Uh, he's really good off the dribble, and my guess would be he's probably improved over time with that. Uh, which is a testament to what they do in their program. The guy's getting better. Uh, his, his beating off the dribble and his passing has really developed. There was a time when probably he was just a shooter, but he's a complete player now. Reminds me a lot of SK in SK's senior year. He's a guy that can get going at any time. He, he can put up 30 on you, and he can get them in different ways. Coach, you talked about defensive breakdowns in Brooklyn. That corner three being open a little bit. Um, what do you see? A little bit giving up? Penetration. And Penetration is yeah. everything. Right. That's the whole problem. Because if you don't help, you're going to give up a layup. The whole problem is we got, got too many guys getting beat off the dribble. Right. So, uh, you know, it's something we work on all the time. Our deflections were low as well. Both both games we had 30 and 27. We were averaging 50 a game going in, which goes back to why the games were low scoring. Uh, we, we weren't getting a, we, our points off turnovers were way down. So uh, we got to do a better job of having more defensive energy. Because uh, as the competition goes up, if you don't create some points off of your defense and you're playing all five on five, you, you'll never see 90. You'll be lucky to see 75, to be honest with you. So we, we've got to get our deflection total back up. Thanks, guys.